Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, workshop with Circuit Stream. Uh, today is actually uh, an open house, and we are going to be uh, learning how will XR uh, transform design. Uh, so we are going to have a guest speaker here that we will have uh, join us in not too, too long. Um, before we get started on the actual presentation, uh, I am just going to go over a few housekeeping notes with everyone. Uh, before I do anything, I always like to make sure that uh, everybody can uh, see me okay and uh, they can hear me okay. Uh, so if you don't mind, uh, feel free to interact with the chat log off to the right there and just let me know that uh, my audio and my visual is all working okay on my side. And, uh, and then I can kind of jump into a few more housekeeping notes. Look good, sound good. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Um, okay, so uh, the chat log is off to the side. I can see that uh, people are interacting with that already, which is great. Uh, we also have a questions and a polls tab off to the side. Uh, the polls tab I, I've put up and I have published some, but um, feel free to interact with that at any point throughout the presentation here. Uh, the questions tab, uh, we will try and uh, answer as many questions as we can as we go through the presentation, uh, but we will take a little bit of time at the very end to go through some Q&A. So if we do miss anything, uh, we will have a chance to do that uh, right at the end. And oftentimes, if we get some uh, really good questions, we like to wait uh, and post them up and kind of uh, you know answer to the whole class, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, um, so that everybody can kind of get uh, the same sort of information there. Um, so everyone can see me okay, hear me, we know uh, how to interact. Um, something I like to ask as well before I jump in is where is everybody joining us from today? Uh, so feel free to put uh, your locations in the chat log there. Um, I am actually from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, that is where our company is founded. Uh, both of the founders live here too. Uh, we've got Toronto, Vancouver, Chicago, Saskatoon, Maryland, Istanbul, uh, Istanbul, sorry, India. Wow, we got lots of people from everywhere. This is great. Nigeria, Costa Rica. Well, welcome. Uh, Finland, uh, Berkeley. Awesome, awesome. So, yes, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you again for joining us here today. Um, I am going to start here uh, by sharing a little bit of a slideshow presentation so that we can kind of go into uh, some of the information. So, uh, this is today's open house, as I said. Um, I'm going to kick it off with uh, just a little bit of an introduction uh, as who I am. Uh, so uh, my name is Tyler Trapp. I come from a little bit of a background in hospitality and uh, tourism, and uh, I've been working now in uh, education and tech for the last couple of years. Um, but uh, personally, I'm a little bit of an artist. Uh, I like painting, and uh, more recently, I've gotten a bit more into uh, digital art. I've been playing a little bit with uh, my iPad and uh, Procreate. So. Uh, then today's uh, um, instructor speaker is going to be uh, Dan Marcusi. Uh, Dan is a circuit stream instructor. Uh, he has a background in UX design. Uh, he's a former product designer uh, from LinkedIn and a YouTube creator. So he's going to have a ton of in, uh, information to share with us. Uh, Dan is also a former student of ours at uh, Circuit Stream. So he's an instructor now and uh, also was a student and took our courses in the past. So he can share some information on both of those experiences with you. Um, so today's open house, I'm just going to run through a really quick agenda here. Uh, the introduction that we're in right now is about five minutes. I'm just uh, concluding this and then I'm going to move into a little quick uh, intro on uh, Unity 3D, uh, an industry overview, um, circuit stream and our educational programs. Um, should take no more than about 10 minutes and then I'll invite uh, Dan to come up on, on uh, stage here so that we can go through some of the, the Q&A and uh, learn about his XR journey. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump into this really quickly here. So, uh, who is circuit stream? Uh, we were founded in 2015. Uh, our founders, uh, Lou and Mike just identified a gap uh, in the demand for ed education relating to both AR and VR. So our goal has always been to share a foundation of knowledge on the best tools, practices, and workflows for unity, as well as XR design and development. And then I guess uh, uh, more recently, we would also include uh, Unreal in that as we are starting to expand into using the Unreal Engine too. Uh, but to date, we've uh, helped over 45,000 learners develop these skills. Uh, these would be learners through our workshops, through our courses, our boot camps, uh, through the different types of education that we offer here at CircuitStream. Uh, our team, we are located uh, all over the world. Uh, like I said before, I'm located in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, uh, but uh, our um, uh, founders are located here. We have uh, staff located uh, across Canada, across the U.S., uh, around the globe, really. Uh, and uh, we're kind of in different locations so that we can uh, help us accommodate students from uh, across multiple different time zones, which is very handy in education. 
Um, Circus Region is also a certified training partner with Unity. Um, so what that means is uh, partners are approved based on their expertise, uh, their focus on quality education, and their demonstrated success for their students. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar with uh, Unity, I will jump into that a little bit more in just a minute to explain that. Um, but uh, these would be the certifications that you can see here. And then uh, speaking of the certifications, uh, I'm excited to share that CircuitStream is one of the few educator, educators in this space that's actually offering XR industry specific certifications. Um, so a lot of uh, different tech certifications, but when it comes to XR specific, um, CircuitStream is one of the only educators doing that. And then we also have uh, some amazing university partners. Uh, this portfolio is growing uh, quite rapidly. Uh, we have new partners, uh, several new partners that will be shown here, uh, likely within the next few presentations. But as it currently stands, these are the university partners that we can share with you. Um, our 10 week courses are available at uh, all of the, the um, facilities that you see on the screen here. And we're also excited to uh, note that our boot camp is going to be kicking off with our university partners here in the fall for our first cohort uh, through the universities. Um, and then uh, who have we worked with? Uh, you know, I, I always joke and say we could probably fill pages and pages of logos of companies that our students have worked with, but uh, this is a really good snapshot. We have, uh, you know, students coming to us from these companies. Uh, they're sending staff through to learn the education, uh, but we also have a ton of our students that go through and take these courses and end up moving into companies like this uh, with their XR uh, education that they get with us. Um, and then in terms of the industry, you know, it's always kind of handy to know where XR is being used. Uh, a lot of people would uh, default to gaming and media and uh, naturally, of course, uh, XR is being used in those industries. But um, a lot of people are unaware that XR is moving into retail, architecture, military, automotive, fashion, healthcare, education, manufacturing, uh, any sort of training. Uh, basically, it's, it's just kind of uh, expanding into all different uh, industries right now. And uh, so the demand, of course, for XR is, uh, is growing exponentially as well well. Um, some industry uh, trends and growth just to share with you. Uh, so PwC released a report back in 2019, uh, maintaining that 23.5 million jobs worldwide would be using augmented and virtual reality by 2030 for training, for collaboration, and to provide new digital experiences. Uh, so obviously that's a massive number. Um, they are also maintaining that VR and AR have the potential to add $1.5 trillion to the global economy by 2030. Uh, so obviously these, these numbers are massive, uh, which is why it's uh, such a good time, I guess, to be going in and, and learning um, XR development and design. Uh, some careers uh, in XR, you can see there's a number of uh, roles and titles that require XR experience uh, from developers and artists to project managers and quality assurance. Uh, and this list is constantly growing as XR is, XR, sorry, is expanding into all industries, as I mentioned before. Um, now is a perfect time to begin expanding your skill set. Uh, XR experience is currently in high demand with job growth for AR and VR continuing at a rapid pace. A few more stats that you can kind of see on the screen here. but very impressive in terms of the uh, the growth for the industry. And then uh, Unity, um, if you are not familiar, sorry, I guess I should say, if, if you've seen this screen before, you've probably been in Unity. Um, and then more specifically, if, if you've seen this muffin clicker game, uh, you've likely taken our four week C-sharp uh, scripting course as well. But uh, for those of you who have not, or who do not recognize this, uh, Unity is a free 3D development engine uh, for building games, simulations, and experiences, and it is the easiest way to begin making apps, games, and experiences. Um, it is currently used to create over 60% of the world's AR, VR content and applications. Um, I did mention before that Unreal is also a very large player in this game, and that's why we're going to be working with them as well. But uh, in terms of uh, you know who, who's doing this the most right now, Unity is, uh, is being used to create over 60%. So we're definitely working with a very, very strong partner there. Um, apps developed in Unity are downloaded about 3 billion times on a monthly basis. Uh, their software is borderless and can be used pretty much anywhere in the world, uh, bringing a powerful creation tool to creators and innovators all over the globe. And then uh, this engine is entirely powered by your ideas. So a lot of people ask like, how this uh, process would work for both the, uh, the XR uh, development and design. Uh, basically, you have an idea, uh, you'd use the um, uh, the tools, the interface, and the broad scope of functionality to build your idea in Unity. Uh, once you've created your uh, application, you can launch it on a multitude of devices using software development kits, or SDKs for short, uh, some of the lingo that we use in this industry here. Uh, those who have downloaded and engaged in the Unity interface know that there's a little bit of a learning curve for beginners. So having guidance, uh, obviously, from an organized and structured course uh, curriculum can make a world of difference and can advance the other new learners into the industry much, much faster. 
Um, a bit, uh, a bit. Uh, sorry, the focus for today is a bit more on uh, XR design, uh, but I did want to give you a brief lay of the land at Circuit Stream with regard to our wider course offerings outside of just the design course. Uh, so these would be the three main courses uh, up on the screen right now. Uh, we have the live um, online XR development with Unity, the interaction design and prototyping, and then the Unity Developer Bootcamp. Um, all three of these courses are uh, both live and then also recorded. And uh, like I mentioned before, the, the two 10-week courses are currently being offered through university partners as well, and the boot camp's kicking off here in the fall. Um, I probably could have um, summed these up into one slide and just kind of listed, but I'm just going to quickly go through these. Uh, there's four in total. Uh, it's just basically showing you that the, the upcoming uh, development cohorts uh, starting at the universities are going to be on December 15th. So you can see UBC here. We can see um, University of Toronto, San Diego, and Riverside, California. It's all just basically showing you the same start dates there. And then uh, without further ado, um, I am going to stop sharing. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to keep this up while we do this. And I am going to invite uh, Dan to pop up on the screen here with us uh, so we can go through a little bit of uh, Q&A with him. Uh, hello, Dan. Hi. Well, hello, welcome. Hi, Ty. Um, Thank you. I'm going to see. I'm going to try and see if I can make your screen a little bit bigger because uh, I feel like that's more important than, uh, than my face down here right now. So welcome, Dan. Uh, we are going to go through uh, a little bit of, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, I guess, uh, on your experience uh, with us and uh, just with XR overall. But uh, before we dive into any of that, maybe I'll just let you do a little bit of a brief introduction on yourself. Yeah, so my name is Daniel Marcusi. I live in San Francisco. I've been a product designer um, in tech for about 10 years. Um, I left my job at LinkedIn at my, and Microsoft um, to basically learn XR design and try to apply my skills in um, product design and design systems and uh, product thinking in this space because I think it's new and it offers a lot of amazing um, opportunities and creativity that I feel a lot of um, tech today um, has kind of lost. So that's, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, on another personal level for my hobbies, I love video games. I love 3D modeling. I love exercising and, you know, I'm like, I get to go outside all day. Um, and I just love being able to learn new things every day. So, yeah. What kind of uh, video games are you interested in? Out of curiosity. Uh, well, I've always been, I've always been a nerd of video games, um, so to speak, but I, I, I pretty much like indie games a lot. You know, like I think that the mechanics of and structure of um, indie games are probably the more, the most interesting. A lot of AAA titles, um, I think have lost their way. I mean, they, they have such a mass consumer market now compared, compared to back in the day that I think that, um, yeah, I mean, and um, when I when I um, interviewed people at my at different agencies and stuff like that, um, I always tell them that like some of the best um, user experience comes from video games and video game onboarding because they're not necessarily limited, but they have kind of mastered everything from HUDs and maps and onboarding and structural systems a long time before um, mobile like mobile applications and web applications have done it. So. I've always turned to it as a source of, um, you know, enlightenment, so to speak. Awesome, awesome. And I have to uh, pause for a second and say that your your cats are getting a little bit of a spotlight in the background there. People are very much enjoying. Um, I met with Dan before we were uh, uh, going to do the presentation here today, and I gave him a heads up that his, his cats might steal the spotlight <laughs> in the background there. Um, so awesome, awesome. So um, uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about your experience, uh, I guess your first experience with XR and what that looked like. Well, I got my hands on the DK2 back in 20, it must have been like 2014 um, or 2013. Um, when I was living in Minnesota, I'm a Midwestern kid, um, but, you know, lived in Chicago, um, lived in Minneapolis, but I got my hands um, into the DK2 back in the day, and I was like, super blown away. I was kind of obsessed with, I mean, I, technically, I could say I got into Virtual Boy back in like 1998 or 1999, right? And I was solely disappointed and my neck hurt. So like when the DK2 came out, I was like, this, this stuff is amazing. And that's when I got really into it. And I kind of dove back into it around 2016 when the Rift came out. But then I realized I was living in a shoebox of an apartment in San Francisco. And like, it's just impossible 
to interact with that. And like, there really wasn't too many tools um, and SDKs available for designers to kind of pick up and play with it. So when I jumped back into it later in life, all that stuff came with it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then um, maybe tell us because you were um, a student with us here at Circuit Stream, and now it's you know kind of full circle. You're an instructor here with us, so um, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, your first experience with us at Circuit Stream and what it was like being a student. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the hard, the first thing I wanted to do, especially when I decided to like, I don't want to work for you know fintech or health or any of that stuff. I was like, okay, I wanted to get into XR, and I'm like there's nothing online about how to design for XR, right? Like trying to like Google or any of that stuff, This I didn't find any threads, right? It kind of was like when I started designing back in like 2011, there really wasn't too many patterns or structure around it. And so when I joined, so I decided to go to Circuit Stream because like I needed, um, I wanted a community because I think I, I was able to build my career pretty well from a uh, product designer from the Midwest to San Francisco. But I realized like it's all about community and it's all about finding people to help you like along that path and understanding where to go and not get lost. So when I joined Circuit Stream, the path opened up, the community opened up and through those people, I was able to um, help myself self-learn as well as help like learn with other people. But as well, I got to meet so many interesting people across the world and that has like helped build my skill set, so I really appreciated that. Awesome. And do you find this industry? I mean, my personal experience, I find everybody very welcoming, uh, very uh, open to share information, uh, wanting to collaborate, especially with XR being so so new on the scene. I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that I always love. When I went to like um, Circuit Stream, um, got me a ticket to AWE, which I was very thankful for. But like, um, I can't express how much like. The, the community of XR right now is so young and everyone is not like the egotism isn't there. When I when I joined like the, um, the Silicon Valley world, you know, there was the people, the who's who walking around just IPO, you know, think they're hot shit. But then like, you know, with but here the egotism isn't there, at least not yet. And everyone is just trying to build things together and help each other learn. So like that's been one of the most interesting things about this environment. So I'm really juiced as a goose about that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, you, you mentioned it already, um, you know, networking is, is so big, but um, I'm going to ask you a question about that in a minute as well, but uh, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, once you get in and you start connecting with people in this industry, that's, that's really how your opportunities kind of open up for you as well, uh, you know, along with the, the education and the knowledge. But um, so tell us, um, Let's see here. What advice, I guess, would you give uh, new people starting in XR design? That's a good one, too. Um, well, it depends. I mean, it matters like what your skill set is and stuff like that. I think it's kind of like figure out a good path. Like figure out, a, like understand like the friction cost between going from flat design to 3D design is quite immense. And it can be very, very um, scary. But like, I think that if you, like, like find the right people and, you know, find the right path to like get you get a taste of everything and then just kind of hone your skills and not get lost and then find people that, you know, will push you forward. Like, that's why I try to create my channel. And that's why I try to reach out to pe whoever like hits me up on LinkedIn. I usually do a FaceTime call with them just because I'm like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And it's just kind of like, just ask those questions and just start building your skills over time. You're not going to pick up everything at once, but that's probably a good thing because especially with XR design and 3D, um, 3D design, like there's so much beauty and creativity that, you know, we've been essentially living in a 2D plane for mass communication for the past 600 years, right? And now we're going into this 3D world. And so all of our heads are going to have to figure out how to design what's in our physical world. If you're not an industrial designer, you know, or interior designer now, like that's just the next thing. So like, there's so many different roles and structures you can focus in. So that stuff, I don't know. Yeah. Just like ask questions, meet people, you know, start building up your skills and ask. Yeah. That's, that's my whole spiel. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's great advice for people who are starting. Um, and actually I was going to ask you too, because you probably have some amazing insight into this. 
Um, obviously not a uh, full description, but are you able to give a little bit of a breakdown on, on the focus of our XI, XR design uh, course that we offer through CircuitStream? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, the, the XR like design course at CircuitStream is kind of structured around um, we're, we're, we're catering to a large group of people who have some experience to no experience in this field. Um, when it comes down to XR design, there's really no, there's there's not many people who have set a standard or structure for it. So like we are always evolving, which is a wonderful thing about circuit stream. But, you know, we start with fundamentals of like, um, philosoph like uh, design philosophy and theory. We go into getting people inside of Unity, um, teach them a little bit about materials and all of like the technical stuff inside of it. And then we start jiving like in, in the VR world. And then we dive into augmented reality and start playing with those different elements as well. And like we touch a bunch of different things that are um, either pretty well like established. VR is somewhat more established than AR, especially at this moment. But we're constantly evolving the structure of our program to, you know, to take what's currently happening and evolving it to the moment. And especially in an industry that is hyper evolving like that, that's kind of hard and rare to do. So I think that's been an interesting challenge, but I think it's it's very valuable for people to jump into. Awesome, awesome. And I, I noticed there's a lot of people that come to us from different types of design backgrounds, you know, graphic design, or uh, would you suggest, you know, somebody who's got a, a design mindset, if they're interested in XR, it would be beneficial for them to take a look at the, the XR design side of things? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think that no matter, look, I mean, if you are a graphic designer or a product or a UX designer, um, a lot of the time, like a lot of the stuff you can bring to the table is valuable, right? Like, you know, you know, the, the difference is, is a lot of the biggest difference is that, like, you have to, instead of designing for resolution or for bleed, you're going to have to design for field of view. And those are new skills that I think that are hyper valuable. And I think, like no matter what you bring to the table, especially from a design space, like it's just going to evolve and it's just going to mature in a different way. So yeah, I think it's very valuable. Awesome. 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 And then um, what was I going to ask you? It's going to ask you uh, the best way to share your work and to uh, uh, network for opportunities. I know we, we mentioned before the, the value of networking, uh, but do you have any sort of advice for people looking to, uh, to utilize that? I think... <laughs> You know, honestly, it's weird because when I started um, as a product designer back in the day, it was even before Dribble. But like we had Behance, we had all of these things that you put your stuff on, and like Dribble and all of these aesthetic-driven places are kind of looked down upon nowadays because there's not much design thinking. It's more of an aesthetic perspective. But I think honestly, like the best places to share your work is probably um, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok you know, um, understand how to format for each one of those and share your stuff based on the your audience and your demographic is important. But then networking, it's really about finding the right groups. I think um, I, I think Circuit Stream has an amazing community to network in, and then you can branch off into finding different discords. So if you go on YouTube, you can find a lot of interesting people who are masters in different domains of XR and 3D and then join their discords and then just keep building on top of that. I think discord and these piecemeal structures are the best for networking at the moment. And I think, and I really, really appreciate that. So that's, I spend the majority of my time primarily on LinkedIn and on discord. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I, I know we expanded. We use both uh, Slack and Discord, I believe, through Circuit Stream. So, uh, just you know, uh, never-ending opportunities for networking was basically what the environment we're trying to create for students here as well. So, perfect. Um, and then uh, this is kind of a, a question that you may not be able to share uh, a ton on because um, you know there's uh, uh, some privacy things here. But uh, do you have any sort of information that you can share on some projects that you're currently working on, or, or types of projects that you're working on right now? Well, I mean, so I, like my professional, a lot of my professional projects are primarily in UX uh, product design at the moment. And a lot of those are because it's kind of like that's how I pay, you know, the bills. Um, but a lot of the things I've been working on privately with um, a bunch of either ex students or designers from around the world um, have been basically We've been focusing, I've been personally focusing on world building quite a bit because I think uh, meta, meta galaxies and meta worlds 
are the most interesting things to me, especially PC VR stuff. And I think that has taught me a lot about like modeling, a lot about UV unwrapping, um, a lot about just like unity in general and scripting. Um, but I've been playing a lot with like creating like prototypes um, and mixed reality toolkit and HoloLens structure, um, trying to basically um, create design system paradigms with people of how do we measure things like depth and hierarchy. Um, and I've just been building a lot of that stuff around it. I think that at the moment, like there's like the industry is so new that trying to build up those skills will be super beneficial. And for me, I'm just wanting to be self, like um, I want to be self-sufficient and I want to start building products myself and working with people to create an equitable structure of creativity instead of going to a larger corporation and being kind of part of the bureaucracy and scene of it. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Thank you for that. Um, and um, I think that was, uh, that was it in terms of kind of the, the main questions that I had about uh, your, your career journey. Um, of course, uh, you know, please feel free to share anything else here that you'd like, but um, usually I would ask here, is there uh, any information that you can share uh, where people can find you, how they can follow you? Um, uh, do you have any uh, social media? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm 36. So like the, like the, the, yeah, the TikToks and the youth and the Instagrams, I've never really been a fan of, I mean, I just, I, I just, rather focus. I, if you want to follow, follow me on my channel, follow me on LinkedIn. If you guys have any questions of, if you have any questions of like where you should focus and what you want to do, always hit me up. I will always give you my time. Um, and yeah, I just love this. That's where you will find me. And, um, I'll probably start a discord soon. So if you like discord, hit me up on discord. Awesome. We're getting, uh, some, some flack on the side there. 36 is young in capital letters. Um, <laughs> I'm 36 too, so I'll agree with that. I'll say 36. But, yeah. I, I've been I've been a curm I've been a curmudgeon since I was seven. So like it just it just you know compiles on. I've been like a 90 year old since I was 70. Like seven. So it's that's that's what I always say too. I've uh, I've been older. Uh, always felt older than I was, anyways. But um, awesome. But we're getting some. You look 32s up there. That's uh, that's perfect. So. <laughs> I'll take that. He'll take that. Either one of us will take it. <laughs> um, so awesome. So yeah, so I guess the takeaway there is uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and then once uh, Dan gets the uh, the Discord set up, um, I'm sure he'd be happy uh, to connect with you that way as well. Um, so Dan is uh, accessible that way. He is an instructor with us here on the design side at CircuitStream. Uh, so uh, if you sign up for one of our design courses, chances are you may interact with Dan that way too. Um, so what I'm going to do here in the kindest way possible is I'm going to boot you back off stage, Dan, for just a couple of quick minutes. Uh, I'm going to share some information uh, about the courses um, just for everybody uh, paying attention here. And then uh, we're going to invite Dan to come back on and we're going to go through some of the, the Q&A because it looks like there's some good questions here that we had from the group. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me just uh, click on back to the presentation here. And I'm going to make this the big screen. There we go. So uh, there is no experience required. Um, this is just kind of, you know, explaining, like I said before, uh, uh, beginners have no fear. The, the two 10 week courses we offer are completely beginner friendly. Uh, the boot camp does uh, require a little bit of experience, but uh, if you're just starting off on an XR journey, whether it be through design or through development, uh, you really don't have to worry about having any sort of experience. We can definitely guide you into one of our 10 week courses. That would be an excellent start for somebody who's brand new. Um, in terms of hardware requirements, this is also a common question we get uh, both Mac and Windows computers are Unity compatible. Um, obviously, you can do a little bit of a computer test on your side. Uh, I believe uh, Unity actually offers a test that you can run to make sure that your system is fully compatible, or at least they have a list of requirements. But um, you don't have to have a crazy high speed computer, and both Mac and Windows uh, are compatible. So most of our students have uh, computers that would work when they register for the course. Um, and then uh, Android and iPhone as well. Um, all of our programs are platform agnostic. Uh, they're designed to provide you with the ability to launch applications on a multitude of devices, uh, whether you prefer headsets like Oculus uh, Quest 2 or mobile devices like an Android or an iPhone, and then obviously uh, flipping between uh, both virtual and uh, augmented reality and, and where your preferences would lie there as well. Uh, community and support. 
Um, my favorite part about education we provide, and I know Dan and I just touched on this quite extensively, but it uh, has to be our circuit stream community. Uh, it's a great place to network, collaborate, and participate in events like game jams. Uh, we also um, have support for students and alumni. Uh, we have open office hours five times a week uh, with our instructors. Um, so they're available outside of the actual class hours. And this would also be available to alumni. So you don't even have to be registered in a current class. You have access to our open office hours, which is great. Um, it's great for continued learning, troubleshooting, project support. Um, and I do always like to give a massive shout out to Lucy and Arky on our student experience team. Uh, they're amazing. They're always making things, mixing things up with coffee hours, showcases. Uh, events, just basically anything to uh, bring the students in to share their personal projects and stories and uh, most importantly to network with one another uh, within the community. Um, quickly on the uh, the courses, I mentioned before the uh, the design and the development 10-week uh, courses and then the boot camp. Uh, both of the de uh, design and development courses are structured uh, almost exactly the same way. Uh, the focus, the content within the courses would be where the uh, difference lies, but uh, both of these are going to be uh, three hours of uh, instruction per week, uh, five open office hours, like I mentioned, uh, flexible part-time lifetime access to all the content, um, sorry, flexible and part-time in terms of the courses, but then also lifetime access to all of the content. Uh, industry recognized certification in partnership with Unity, which is the uh, the largest company in the, uh, the industry doing uh, development for AR and VR right now. And then uh, weekly one on one support is also an option. We do have uh, upgraded packages where you can do one on one uh, packages with the instructors here for both of the courses. So uh, the development, like I said, it's exactly the same. Uh, oh, and I should mention there on the previous slide, December 12th would be the next design cohort start date. Uh, December 15th would be the next that we have for XR development with Unity. Um, all the details that I already mentioned, they're, they're the same. The Unity Developer Bootcamp. The uh, upcoming course that we have here will be October 11th, and I think we're still taking uh, registrants on right now, probably just at the, the very end here, uh, taking on a, a few last ones. But uh, if you have any interest in the developer bootcamp, please, of course, reach out and see if you can secure one of the spot, uh, spots there. Uh, the bootcamp gets a little bit more intricate uh, in Unity development overall and expands beyond XR. Uh, uh, you know, augmented and virtual reality. Uh, it's going to prepare you, prepare you for 3D development career. It's going to teach you uh, C sharp coding logic. Logic. Um, you get to build 10 plus projects during the course. Uh, you get one on one career services uh, because this is a full career boot camp. And then uh, you get the industry recognized certifications, like we mentioned before. Uh, so that would be the boot camp. Um, in terms of our certifications, I just wanted to share, uh, share a simple visual to give you an idea of the certification path for each of our courses. So all three of our main courses um, are going to come with our circuit stream certification backed by Unity, uh, the boot camp, the development, and the interaction design. Uh, the difference here is that uh, for the boot camp, because it is a career course, um, we actually worked with Unity to develop their, their certifications as well, and we can include their associate level programmer uh, certification in with our boot camp. Um, our certification is backed by Unity, so technically you're getting two certifications that are Unity uh, backed, uh, but the benefit there is that both come uh, with different uh, networks as well. And, you know, one of the main things we, we mentioned today was the importance of having networks. So um, this, you know, it's never going to hurt you as you're moving in to have uh, certification on both sides and to have network opportunities on both ends as well. Uh, pricing, uh, very important to know the pricing for our courses. The starter package for both the development and the design courses starts at 3950. Um, and then we do have the plus package available, which would be uh, adding in the additional 10 hours of one on one time with the instructor. Um, there are payment plans available for both of these courses. I'll touch on that in just a quick, quick second here. Um, in terms of the boot camp, we do have early bird pricing at 13495. And then the uh, standard rate for a boot camp would be 14995. Uh, the early bird cutoff on uh, August 30th, so I believe at this point we would just be left with the standard rates. Uh, but of course, if you have any questions about uh, any of this, just reach out to uh, somebody here and we will definitely connect you with the right person. Uh, in terms of finance plans, uh, we do have options, internal finance options available for any of our international students. Uh, for any of the students located within the United States, uh, we do partner with Climb Financing and we can uh, offer external loans uh, for up to five years. Uh, I believe the five year would be more for the bootcamp and then there's some, some shorter periods available for the other uh, 10 week courses there. So again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us and let us know. Uh, our lovely admissions team, I uh, used to be on this team myself, and I've uh, more recently kind of moved into our university partnership side, but uh, we have lovely people here on the admissions team, I'm happy to uh, connect and assist with anybody looking to register for our courses. Um, 
you are going to get a copy of this full presentation now uh, emailed to you afterwards so you don't have to worry about uh, keeping track of all of this but uh, here are some links here for some of our course um, uh, registration pages at, at the different partners, university partners, and then at the bottom there it says TS, that would just be our circuit stream course, so uh, circuit stream page rather, to sign up directly. And that is it for the, the actual formal, formal part of the presentation. Um, so I can uh, get past that, I can invite uh, Dan to pop back up on stage here now. And uh, we can open up the questions and kind of go through some of this. So welcome back, Dan. Hello. Uh, going to make your screen a little bigger there. So let's take a quick look here. Uh, so what is the biggest difference between UX and UI and development? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think it's everyone's job to take consideration of um, like UX when creating things. Actually, I think some of my, my favorite develop like designers on any team uh, has been to developers in general, but a lot of the time um, UX, it depends on the organization, but a lot of the times UX and UI, um, they're kind of grafted together, but let's just call this a product designer. A lot of the times product designers can, like, are more concerned about flow, business strategy, um, you know, um, and monetization and stuff like that. And a lot of development is primarily done getting the things to work properly and being sufficient, like and being consistent, if not sufficient with their code base. Um, I think that they can bleed back and forth. I've been in companies that were run by engineers. I've been in companies who worked at, who were built by, like run as like, like designers or by business people. And it just depends the kind of environment of how those kind of worlds work together. Awesome. 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 Thank you. We've got uh, five upvotes on that one there. So that was a good one to post. Um, do students work together in the design course? Um, I'm, I think that we're trying to do more of that in general. A lot of the design courses, I think the hardest part of the design course is that you need um, to get people understanding the tools um, really, really well. But I think especially at the beginning of the course, trying to get people to ask questions and create concepts in um, Shapes XR and other stuff like that as in collaboration, um, it is definitely, um, that does happen. Um, but I think over in the future, more collaboration will occur, but yeah. Awesome. 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 And then oh, here, I'll put this one up here. Uh, does this course focus heavily on 3d design such as blender? It does not. Um, it does not. I, um, I'm personally going to be starting my, like doing like, um, groups, like, group design stuff on my, by myself, focus on blender and um, world building and stuff like that. But I think in the pipeline, we've been looking at adding a lot more 3D design courses to it. So I would say keep an eye on it for sure. Awesome, awesome. Then this one looks like it's a good one for you as well. Um, so I'm a, a UI IX uh, designer, uh, UX maybe, a designer from past three years working uh, with big fours. My question is uh, everyday design trends are changing widely, but some corporate um, corporations still follow old trends and they believe that people's behavior changes very uh, lately. Uh, how do you keep, uh, or how do I keep creativity in line with everyday trend changes? Oh, um, that's a very, that's a golden question. So I think, okay, so I've worked at, you know, fang companies and stuff like that. Um, the concept of like, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, first of all, <laughs> sorry, this is a very difficult question. So when you're part of a larger company, um, they have a ship that's really, really hard to turn. And if you're talking about trends and stuff, it matters if it's aesthetic or if it's like user experience trends, right? I think a lot of people get the both of them kind of mixed up, right? Um, when you are creating a product that's heavily accessible, and that means it's, is it scalable for people with disabilities, but also is it internationalized? Do you have and all of that stuff? Um, a lot of the focus is, you know, sending that kind of content out for millions of people and aesthetics take a long time to like, you know, to actually get out there. And I think places with good design systems are trying to fix that problem, but like aesthetic design is something that changes every six months. And so like, if you're a product designer and if you're working on a design team, trying to stay on trend is next to impossible because as soon as you update your code base, or design your whole structure of things, 
everything has changed, right? So I think focusing on aesthetic design is kind of a lost cause, but I think that there is such thing as like classic design. I personally like mid-century modern design because of its simplicity and structure, but that's also very difficult to do and nailing that is hard. So like the, the keep creative in what you want to do, I would say is like, it's a, like figure out what your value of design is. If it's purely on aesthetic design, you know, there are smaller companies that you can move and pivot a lot faster. If, if you fall in love with the concept of problem solving, there's a lot of places that will offer that kind of form of design. I hope that makes sense. Like, cause like trying to chase like the new, you know, trend of like, you know, glass, like skeuomorphism or anything, or like stuff like that, or trying to do sub like sub grids and breaking those sub grids in design is kind of like that stuff will be gone really, really fast. And the better you get, the more you realize you can anticipate trends, but you just, you just, just be good at what you design in general, you'll be fine. I think that totally makes sense. Um, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh, where are we? Uh, if not explicitly associated with Unity, is there equivalent with Unreal Domain with all simultaneous courses? I'm going to put that up here. If not explicitly associated with Unity, is there equivalent with Unreal? Oh, okay, so we don't, yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're kind of expanding into Unreal right now in terms of circuit stream. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't believe, are, are we um, incorporating uh, Unreal into the design course as it currently stands? I think it's it's still in early stages, right? It's still in early stages and like a lot of the like the SDKs and tools that make designers jobs a lot easier are in Unity. Um, so like when, you know, when you have Oculus and uh, Microsoft and stuff like that start like like really empowering, creating more powerful SDKs on their platform, we'll probably see more adoption. But right now, Unity has just been kind of in that field and been running with it and they're um, and the stuff they offer is quite um, is quite user friendly. As I stated prior, getting into Unity, like getting into Unity back in 2016, was like almost impossible for someone in my career. Uh, but now there's a, there's enough like pre built frameworks that makes our jobs a lot easier and a lot less scary. So yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And then this one's good. Uh, I can probably assist with this one too. So, where do we see Circuit Stream graduates ending up? Um, you know, big enterprise companies, startups, freelance. What's the distribution? So, um, you know, I, I have some experience with this, having worked on the uh, the side where I'm assisting students uh, to register for the courses and, and kind of guiding them through the process. Um, it it's it's a tough uh, question to answer because it's the the answer is is pretty diverse. Uh, we have a lot of people that come into XR who are completely brand new, but they're looking at merging it with some education or some industry knowledge that they have from, you know, a previous career. Um, and in that case, they, they're able to kind of advance into different areas a lot quicker than if it's somebody who's starting uh, XR completely brand new and is not looking to merge it with any previous experience that they have in life. They're just, you know, starting off completely brand new. Um, so in those cases, we have some people who go through the 10 week courses and it's completely, the, you know, the beginning of their journey. It's going to take them probably a year or two to, to start building their networking and uh, getting some of the knowledge base that they need. Um, but then we also have people who take the 10 week courses who do at land uh, pretty decent uh, roles within XR because they're, they're combining it with the previous job experience that they have. Um, so, if, you know, say they're working in a company and, and they get challenged within the company to learn a little bit more on the XR side, there could be a promotion internally there that they would be then eligible for once they have that. Um, but it would be different than somebody walking in off the street who is trying to go for that same job who doesn't have that, that career experience. So um, this is me just jumbling. I'm going to, I could talk about this forever, but um, we have a lot Lot of uh, people who are going to large companies or there are a lot of large companies who are sending their staff to us for training uh, so you know the, the, on the presentation you likely saw the page with all the logos that i shared uh, we the, the reality is we have a lot of students that have been trained and who work for those companies previous or we have a lot of students who are moving on to those companies um, and then in terms of actual career support uh, the boot camp is a little bit more focused on actually uh, <coughs> allowing people to move into a full career um, the 10 week courses we offer are not meant to take you from zero knowledge to uh, being a high level XR developer designer in, in you know, a 10 week period. That's kind of impossible to do in a lot of cases, uh, but it, it's you know, uh, there to give you the foundation of what you would need. And uh, maybe I'll let Dan uh, speak to this. Is, is this sounding kind of accurate, Dan? Yeah, I mean, I've only been teaching here for six months, but I've seen a lot of people go interesting places for sure. Um, you know, the more, the more driven you are and the more you learn yourself like a self starter, then 
the more success you'll have for sure. Yeah. And then the, the boot camp, the goal of the boot camp is to be more of the career focus. Uh, so for anybody who's coming through, if they are looking at, uh, at working with uh, Unity development overall, and, and they're looking at, uh, you know, having some support uh, on the career side, uh, the, the boot camp would likely be a better fit for them uh, than the the ten week courses, or at least uh, something for them to consider in addition to the ten week courses, because uh, the ten week courses are great for beginners. So, um, so hopefully that uh, that answered. Um, you know, feel free, uh, Jay uh, Lou, feel free to reach out to us uh, with any questions. Uh, we have a lot of uh, great stories, and we have a lot of uh, portfolios and uh, experiences that we can share. If you go through our website uh, at Circuit Stream and you go through the uh, blog portion. Uh, there should be a section that uh, will guide you through a whole bunch of our students and kind of I think we try and highlight one per month and it shows them uh, what they're doing, where they came from and kind of what they're, they're working on now. So a really good space for you to go check that out. Um, and then uh, who do you work with closely in your team? Is their collaboration experience uh, different from being a product designer? Um, good question. So when I started um, product design back in the day, um, you know, a lot of the times we had teams of like five or six, right? I've worked at, you know, it, it's, it was different working at larger companies and stuff like that, where I had 500 designers underneath me and trying to work with them. Um, but, you know, right now it's kind of like, especially in XR reminds me of my early days where like, there's really no design, designated design tool and there's no real way to do anything. So it's a lot of it's kind of heavily collaborative with engineers. So it's like, here's the concept that I crafted, here's kind of like the aesthetic and the structure of the flow. And, you know, you kind of pick up as many tools as you can to take the burden off of engineers and you kind of just go back and forth, you know, versus kind of like more of a waterfall where it's like designers get it, we plan it, we, we ship it with specs to engineers, they build it. Um, we're not, a lot of people like at this point of the um, industry, we're not there yet. It's more, it's heavily collaborative as far as I've seen so far. Awesome, awesome. Well, oh, we've got some good questions here today. Uh, let's see. Um, UX uh, often still feels like an overlooked uh, aspect in games. What is the view of UX and XR in the industry currently? Yeah, um, in 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 games or in XR? Oh, in the XR industry, um, I just don't think it's really well defined. <laughs> you know, and and I mean, and that's a good thing because, like, um, I think that that allows people to actually um craft patterns and design that no one's really seen before and actually create really good design i think i think um especially ux is, is a very heavy buzzword that can be abused in different organizations as like a capital ux versus like a lower like lowercase ux in a sense where like they just think ux is important but they don't really they just think it's just a building block but they don't understand the full concept of it and I think that we're going into the future of design is going to be very much the same way. I think that people are going to try like like skeuomorphism back in like 2007, 2010. Like we're going to be going into this realm where everyone's going to be designing for mobile and flat world within um, XR. And because people don't understand any new paradigms. And I think that that will slowly grow over time. And I think that XR will become like UX and XR is going to be a lot more of a collaborative um, and interesting field than there is currently, because you're going to have to consider wayfinding. You're going to have to consider designing for like billboards to watches to everything to like really create a cohesive experience. And so like um, there really is no set standard. And I guess that's just me going and going kind of going off, but yeah. No, that's perfect. Just gives us a little bit of a, uh, you know, understanding, I guess, of the industry and where it's currently at and, and kind of where it's going to. Um, and then let's do, this one looked good too. I currently build AR VR experience with Figma and Adobe Aero. And uh, I feel like there's more. Could you please help me with skill sets and tools that can help build enough confidence, maybe some suggestions? Yeah, there's a lot more. Um, <laughs> AR, like, uh, you know, um, I still like, the flat, I mean, Figma and Adobe Arrow are really cool tools. And, you know, God, you know, I'm very sad about Figma getting bought up today by Adobe, but we won't get into that. Um, but I think that if you want to become more uh, confident in yourself, I think that like the things you should probably pick up and like every designer should pick up, they need to be generalists first and foremost, being a specialist 
in this field is we're not there yet. We'll get there, but I would figure out, learn the basics of Blender and 3D software, learn the basics of Unity and how to build stuff within Unity, and then like learn a little bit of C Sharp. You don't have to memorize how to do everything. You can just find tutorials. Um, if you guys are interested, hit me up. I have loads and loads of Notion boards of tutorials and guidance to get you guys started. Um, and I think just kind of building up your skills in a game engine, 3D software, if you have Figma, that's great. And just kind of start building it over and you'll get more and more confidence and just keep building stuff. Awesome. And I think this might actually be a little bit of an overlap with this next question as well. Uh, how do I explore the various paths uh, within product VR design? I feel like there's a multitude of options and it feels overwhelming. So uh, I feel like some of your previous answer kind of overlaps with that. <laughs> yeah. Um... Product VR design right now is, it exists, but it's, um, it's just starting to, um, it's just, it's just starting to hit. I mean, once mass consumer um, XR hits the market, and what I mean by that more and more, like when Apple, um, especially when AR gets popular, um, they're like, there's going to be a lot of different paths to focus on. Um, I would say that like, figure out what excites you about the medium instead of the medium itself like for me i get a lot of my inspiration by going on places like like neos and vr chat which are pc based vr worlds but there i get inspiration of storytelling to wayfinding to design and to shaders and all of that stuff and that gives me a focus of like okay how can i do this if you just simply be like okay i guess i'm in unity now you know it's kind of like well is that a good enough like reason is that a good enough thing to push you like ahead and so find something that excites you if you don't like games you know find what is, excites you about modern day mobile applications and how can you replicate that or like if you like if the concept of building out like models excites you and have them move around and have you interact with them that's a great place to start just find something that like sparks your interest and i guarantee you you'll probably move your interest around a lot the more you learn and the more you connect with people because people will show you all kinds of cool stuff and then you'll just keep building upon that over and over and then you'll find you'll be more confident and you'll be you'll have a better picture yeah awesome 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 these are good questions here today too um, very good questions uh, what do you think of using unreal for developing xr games <laughs> just a general bold question <laughs> I, I don't I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I know that the benefits of Unreal with their blueprints and their like their massive library. I know that from a as like from a lot of perspectives, like Unreal is a superior engine um in a lot of ways. And um and I, I really want to get more into it. I just, you know, it's just kind of at the moment I just have the frameworks and SDKs available to me within unity but i i don't i the the war between the two i don't really have any buy-in i i'll probably will learn unit like uh, unreal sooner or later just because i get excited about the tools and what i can build that, yeah and that's i think as a company we we kind of have the same sort of overall standpoint that's why we want to interact with and start incorporating unreal as well uh, there's so much benefit to both and, and they both kind of uh, specialize in different areas as well um but yeah yeah that's great so um what would i have to learn or where should i get started if i wanted uh to one day apply a mixed reality at a large scale it's kind of a, a broad question i feel like it would depend on what way you're looking to implement it? Um, on a large scale, <clears throat> well, if you, yeah, that is kind of a broad question. I'm just going to bring up a hypothetical situation to try to hone it in a bit, right? Let's just say that I want to go to a museum, and inside the museum, I want everyone who is has a phone or are wearing AR goggles to witness a piece of art moving in front of me, right? you know, it's, it's synchronicity, right? So to consider what that is, you probably have to have a game engine or something like that, that can not only be like um, synchronous about like showing the same thing, but also you have to be able to deliver it to people's devices um, in a like, um, you know, in a way that, you know, talks to everyone at the same time. I, what's the best way, like interoperability. Like you have to have a, 
a engine and a, and a synchronous structure um, that, that has interoperability for a lot of people. Now, to do that today, you can use things like Unity Mars and stuff like that to actually start building things out. I think um, Spark AR and stuff like that, people are trying to do that more um, with like social media, but those are usually asynchronous and they're kind of limited. Um, but I think a lot of things like um, a shared AR or mixed reality experience in a broad perspective would require a lot of networking capabilities, a lot of like rendering capabilities that we don't necessarily have yet. And from an accessibility perspective of like, how you know can every phone can everyone be able to tap it within a single thing and have it work instantaneously that's going to be a major hurdle for the future of our craft for sure awesome okay and then we've got a few more here actually before we jump into the rest too, I just wanted to quickly mention that we have the polls tab open too. And I know we've got a few in there. Um, I think one of them uh, is a question, if, if you do have any uh, questions for us uh, in terms of connecting with uh, an admissions representative, uh, please uh, feel uh, free to fill that in and then we'll get your contact details and we can reach out to you. Uh, but in general, there should be a few polls there. So feel free to interact. Um, and then I'm just gonna jump back in and get these questions. Um, would Unity be used for mixed reality, augmented reality applications and devices? Uh, yes, 100%. Um, that's basically the, the main tool that we're using here uh, to teach students. And, and like we said, we're going to be uh, expanding into Unreal as well. But uh, yes, Unity would definitely be the, the main tool that we're using here for that. And then uh, is there an opportunity to rethink how user interfaces work in XR, uh, i.e. buttons, text, data, visualizations? Uh, how would a modern day business app like Salesforce uh, be used in XR? That's a great question. Um, yeah, can, uh, can you put it on the screen? I, for some reason, my questions have, I just like would like to reference it. Yeah, of course, I just, um, I just put it up there now. Uh, okay, I don't see it. It's fine. I think it's just an error. Um, okay, so sorry, the question is, is how, um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Of course, yeah. So is there an opportunity to rethink how user interfaces work in XR? Uh, like the buttons, the text, the data visualization. Um, and an example uh, they're asking is uh, how would Salesforce, for example, be used in, in an XR platform versus the way it is right now? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, there's, I mean, if, like once you start adding depth or like a third dimension to things, it's going to change how we perceive things, especially when it comes down to depth. Like when you start showing, like for instance, with Salesforce, who primarily works with quantitative data, and like being able to display that quantitative data in front of a lot of a lot of people, um, the ability to show it in ways that make impact, um, especially. I mean, we do this all the time with product design, where you know you figure out how, like you weigh like um, the hierarchy and structure to focus on the deliverable or the like, the desire of the user. And I think that when it comes down to data visualization or any kind of inf informative content, like that's going to be no different. Now, like, do you really want to have a pie chart that's the size of like a skyscraper? I mean, maybe if, you know, you just want to like, you know, be showy, but like the concept of hierarchy and structure of how you visually see things and how you manage it is going to be like very, very interesting. And that, that kind of brings me to like a philosophical thing. So it's like, if we're designing right now, so the way you design an XR, as I said before, you're not necessarily designing for resolution. So the concept of like the fold, the classic concept of the fold um, is, um, is kind of gone. So then you basically are designing for, as I said, field of view, but not only just field of view, you're designing for 30 degrees vertically and horizontally. But that means, you know, if you hold up your thumb, that's like to your face, that's basically the safe spot for your eyes to be. But that means you have peripheral vision that you're designing for when that has to do with hierarchy. So when you're designing for, if you're designing charts and stuff like that, pulling focus, managing hierarchy based on peripheral vision and how people are sitting or standing, that's going to change considerably how we design everything that we're doing. So, yeah, I, I know that's a little bit nerdy or gets into the the weeds a little bit, but yeah, it's going to be exciting. That's really interesting, actually. I was uh, I enjoyed that answer. <laughs> I enjoyed them all, but that one's in particular. I felt like I just learned more there too. Um, and so I've, we had one that popped up in the chat. I'm going to try and see if I can put it in here. 
Um, so it's looking like I'm asking this question. I'm not, it came up in the chat, but it looked like a couple of people were uh, mentioning it. Um, for the, what is the difference uh, for the 10 week XR design course? What is the difference if I take it not directly through, but one of the university partners other than credentials? Uh, I guess I can answer this one here. Um, so basically the, the course structure is exactly the same. Uh, if you take the course through uh, circuit stream directly, um, or if you take it through one of the university partners, uh, the instructors are gonna be the same. The content is going to be exactly the same. Um, and in fact, we do uh, some of several of our university partners uh, opt into shared classrooms so that the students joining from several different universities are able to network with one another uh, as they go through the courses. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what that would look like. The difference, the main difference is uh, if you are located in the uh, state or province where the university is um, located and you're looking at taking the course directly through that uh, facility, uh, once you complete, you'd also get a certificate of completion just from the establishment in addition to our circuit stream uh, certification that you would get. So uh, you get the same badges, you get the same credentials, you'd have the same networking opportunities. Uh, the difference there is uh, once you go through university, they're just going to also uh, give you a piece of paper that says you completed this course, uh, course through, uh, you know, ABC establishment sort of thing. So, um, but the content's all the same. Uh, and, and the catch is, I guess, to go through the universities, you do have to be located uh, in the same spots have to be uh, able to go through that. And then let's see, uh, oh, <laughs> Z, our company, she already added that same question I just did. We're both on top of it. Um, what is the difference between uh, UX, UI uh, in web development compared to VR, AR, and XR? That's a good one for you. Sorry, sorry, can you repeat that? Of course, uh, what's the difference between uh, UI, UX, and web development uh, as compared to VR, AR, and XR? So web, sorry, I, I, I wish I can get these questions up because like there, there's like a couple of different questions in there. So you're saying what's the difference between UI, uh, UX and web development and sorry? Uh, in web development and that compared to VR, AR and XR. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I guess, within web development across the board. Mm, I'm trying to understand what that means. Sorry. Um, so why you can't see it up on the screen here but i know it's hard for me it's like um it's, it just says nobody asked a question yet which, oh. that's a, which is a darn lie um, <laughs> uh, basically um, i guess the, it, they're just asking the main difference between ux ui uh and then vr uh, ar vr um or you know is there a difference or would they be kind of utilized together uh, when it comes to web development i mean I mean, UX, UI, I, I mean, if I'm, I'm just going to smash it together, like what's different, like a product designer and for web development versus a product designer for XR, is that basically the question? I, I guess, yeah, I thought you can answer that, yeah. Um, there really is no difference in a sense where like you're still like having to manage hierarchy, design structure and intent, but just for different mediums. One medium is a 2D plane. Um, like that is located on a server. The other one is, or like on a mobile application or, and the other one is just that you are taking, you're moving from the 2D plane to the 3D plane, but you're still gonna be a UX designer um, or a product designer in that sense as well. There's really no difference. It's just your skill sets are gonna have to, your, your skill sets and how you design will have to drastically evolve. Oh, that's good. I think that's that's kind of what they were they were asking there. Um, and do we have any uh, predictions? Uh, so I'll read this one here. I, I know you can't see them up on the screen now, so I'll, I'll instead of blasting through it, I'll read this one a bit slower here. Um, do you have any predictions uh, as to when XR designers uh, will need to be skilled up uh, to be able to hit the ground running uh, once the XR design industry gets more mainstream? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I put on my little like future goggles all the time to predict. Um, okay, so if I go too long, I, I apologize. I've thought about this. So essentially, we have to consider a couple of different things when trying to figure out when do we need to be ready when the consumer revolution of XR happens. And then you have to ask yourselves, how long is that going to take? So XR in, its, in itself right now is in its infancy. Um, there are different things within it, like VR is has like a lot more history to it than say mixed reality. Um, and I would say it depends on how the market goes. I think like the the computer market was in the, the 80s to the 90s, 
a lot of computers and stuff focused on um, you know office industrialization um, and some creativity when it blew up mainly in the early the early aughts um you know things started to speed up and more consumers were starting to take a hold of it and the, the demand for product design really started paying off in the mid teens now i think that it's going to be a lot faster um than the mid like it's going to be a lot faster than like say 20 years from like 1989 to 2009 and like the mobile res the mobile revolution changed everything because i think culturally you have to consider that like it's not just can the technology exist is that is there consumer understanding and knowledge of the value of a product and i think that will come faster than expected so i have a lot of designer friends who are at all these different thing companies and they ask me the same question and i say that like it depends on what you want your role to be in this new field is if you want to simply jump between being a product designer at a company where you design from designing flat design into vr you have and and to find a comfortable job where you know you just kind of go in you're the team of 15 to 20 people working that's probably seven to eight years away if you you know but things will be established things will ipo um, a lot of the patterns will start to emerge um, and you will have not as much control, but you'll be comfortable, right? So that means you have like around seven or eight years for that to happen. Now, if you want to be someone who wants to help create this new visual language that will help our species communicate and be a bigger player in the space and find a specialty and, you know, eventually get paid more, um, you know, I would say that's probably going to happen within the next two or three years, right? And which is cool if you start doing it now, because if you're just figuring out how to move a cube around now, and if you just keep at it, you know, every day for like two or three years, that cube is going to turn into worlds and your skill sets are going to constantly evolve. And, you know, that stuff is cool. So like, if you just want to move from like a lateral space, you have some time. If you want to define where that space will be, you know, better late than ever, you know, better start now because I think it's fun. And I think the community is a lot more open to exploration and collaboration. Yeah. Awesome. Really, really good answer. Um, and then let's see, I don't know if we had any more. Oh, yeah, we did one last one here. Uh, do we offer our boot camp uh, via UCR, our uh, California Riverside? Uh, I don't believe that is one of the universities that we're offering the boot camp um, this upcoming fall. Um, please feel free to, to reach out in, internally here. Um, you can connect with us and we can take a closer look. The boot camp would still be available for you, whether it's offered through the university or just you, you, know, you register through us directly at, at the company here. Um, and then we may also have some additional California partners uh, in the next uh, six to eight months. Um, and then we may be looking at offering the boot camp through those partners as well, but uh, you know, it could be a little bit uh, up the road. So uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, we can definitely take a look at the information there for you, but either way, you know, you'd have access to the boot camp. We can definitely get you into it if, if you were interested. Um, and I think that's it. I think we've hit all the questions on here. I'm just doing a quick scroll through. I don't see anything else uh, for anybody else um, or for anybody who hasn't interacted with the polls yet. If you're still in here, please feel free to go in and uh, interact with the poll. I'm just taking a quick look. Um, oh, there were some questions in the middle. Apparently I missed some. Let's take a quick look. Uh, oh, there are. Uh, where were you in your journey of learning XR when you signed up for Circuit Stream? Uh, this is for you, Dan. Uh, did you already have experience designing in XR or was it completely fresh for you? And I, I would assume this would be when you were a student. Um, it was completely new. I mean, I, I started so my journey of XR before joining Circuit Stream. I was just trying to find answers to questions that haven't been answered online, which is kind of rare. And so I was heavily learning Blender and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I need more guidance. I need a community. How do the number one thing I knew is like, I needed a community. So like a place to join, to find like-minded people to build things with. And then that's when I found circuit stream. And then that's when I joined. And I think it's been beneficial for sure. Ooh, this is a good one for you. This one's a challenging question. What was the hardest moment in your uh, career changing journey? Um, how was the learning curve for you when you were learning? Uh, and are you experiencing any uh, challenges or some challenges right now, I guess? 
I mean, the hardest thing is giving up like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. <laughs> um, I think that's the hardest thing. The, the best thing about it is that like I run into problems all the time to like trying to solve like the hardest stuff is learning new things. Right. But learning new things is also probably the thing that drove me nuts about working at fang companies is because I didn't learn anything. I was just like, Hey, put together this flow, do this. You know, every day I'm like, okay, how the hell, why is Unity not working? Or why isn't this working? And I always go to bed with an answer. You know, sometimes it keeps me up until two in the morning, but like every day I feel like I'm building equity in my skill set and who I am. And that to me is, you know, well worth any amount of money just because I just am more of a more structured human being. So that's kind of like, that's like the, the challenges of learning some technical skill are easy to like get over right the i think the hardest thing is being stuck and not going anywhere in your life when especially if, if it's a career a creative career that you really have a lot of passion for so yeah yeah but and just to expand on that too uh, just to make sure um the viewers are aware like uh what, what uh, dan's speaking to as well is when you're when you're changing your career especially if you've been established something um you know if you're starting off a new journey you're, you're quite often going to be starting off at the beginning you're going to be giving up you know uh, high salaries you're going to be giving up experience that you may have had in a previous industry but that's certainly not to say that there isn't a, a ton of experience in xr design and a ton of well-paying experience and job opportunities that's you know it's just it's the process of, of kind of starting anything new i saw a couple sad faces when you said uh, giving away hundreds of thousands just hoping hoping people are aware that's just you know with any, any mean, industry job change it's it, i mean <laughs> if when you, when you you're right when you start from like it's like i did 10 years of a of a like now well like uh, respected career and i'm like this is cool i'm bored let's start over and just build my that wall back up but you know i was able to take 10 years of experience in that and bring it to what I'm doing now. So it's not, it's not for not, you're, you're still bringing it with you. You're just evolving your space. And I think right now, especially in the product design world, things have kind of stagnated. That bubble has kind of deflated and things are just being consistent. I think a lot of designers now are saying I'm bored of the same thing over and over again. I'm like, yeah, your medium is very limited. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. A lot of my friends are going into pottery or woodworking. Like a lot of a lot of a lot of product designers, especially in Silicon Valley, are jumping ship for lesser paying work that they find exciting. But I think XR will it is and will become more and more like there's going to be a lot more job opportunities in XR, and I think there's going to be a lot more money in XR in in the next five years. Oh, I fully agree. I guess you know based on the trends and, and the companies, the people that I'm chatting to on my side, I, I would fully agree with that. Um, and then is there a plan for new bootcamp for XR designers or with the development bootcamp? Uh, so the bootcamp itself right now is very much development focused. Um, I think we are looking internally at, uh, at some point at uh, implementing some sort of a bootcamp or something a little bit more career focused on the design side as well. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's a ton of opportunity if you take the 10 week course with us and then follow any of the advice that Dan has given you today in, in the last hour and a half, you're, you're probably going to get yourself into a good position and, and start building your portfolio. Um, and then are VR, AR developers paid less than software engineers uh, in the industries like game development? Uh, it's probably a hard question to answer. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I, I probably right now, but that's because there's not much. I mean, I think I don't, I can't really answer that question per se, but I have a feeling there's going to be a huge brain drain within the video game industry within the next five to 10 years, just because your video games are not going to be able to compete from a financial perspective as like a social media network in XR like the amount of money and monetization is just not going to be able to compete. So like, there's this, like, I think that a lot of the chain, I think developers will get paid more designers will get paid more and the, the video game industry will have to be a lot more competitive um, than it currently is. Awesome. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think we can leave it there. I, I feel like we've hit all the questions and we had some amazing questions here today, which was awesome. Uh, lots of people interacting. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned it a few times. This is all recorded. Uh, you will get a copy in your email. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate. Reach out to uh, any of the members of the team here. Uh, but thank you again, uh, Dan, for taking the time with us here today. This uh, was awesome. Um, we will definitely look forward to, uh, to doing another one of these with you here. Um, but uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Dan as well. And then uh, once he gets his Discord set up, uh, we will encourage him to share that with our community internally here too. So if you stay involved with us, you'll likely be able to, uh, to access that once he gets that set up. So uh, thank you, Dan. Um, happy uh, Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your happy week Happy Thursday. Here. And Take care, uh, thank everyone. you everyone for joining. Have a, have a great day. Hey, bye-bye.